Welcome to State Matters. I'm your host, Matt Miratori. Today with us, we have the Mass Lift Army Corps member currently serving as a Regional Conservation Coordinator at the Southeastern Massachusetts Pine Barren Alliance in Plymouth. That's a mouthful. <laughs> a recent UMass grad with a degree in Environmental Services. Please welcome Jack Gizard. Welcome, Jack. And joining Jack is the co-founder and lifelong member of the Friends of the Miles Standard State Forest. She's also the co-founder and serves as facilitator for the Massachusetts Forest and Park Friends Network. In 2012, she co-founded Southeastern Massachusetts Pine Barren, Barren Alliance and serves as president. Welcome, Charles Heller. Thank you very much. Good to much. see you again. It's good to be here. Now, I first met you a couple years ago, and I was fascinated by some of the stuff you do. But before we get into it, let's just talk about who you are as individuals. Uh, that's how we usually start our show. So, Jack, why don't we start with you? Who are you? Uh, Tell so, the people who you are. So, like you just said, um, I'm a recent graduate of, of the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, graduated with a degree in environmental science. Um, and I'm currently serving as a regional conservation coordinator. Uh, and what is that? Um, so, the regional conservation coordinator is trying to build um, uh, like a regional partnerships between conservation organizations. Okay. So. Uh, for my position in AmeriCorps, um, I'm trying to do that for Southeastern Massachusetts, obviously. Um, uh, Charles is my supervisor. She's um, helping me to enable that process. Um, that it also covers a lot of different things. Um, so some of the things that I've been doing is I've been teaching um, this after school program with some students at Brockton High School. Um, I've uh, done this um, updating of a uh, manual uh, for, for information provided by the state government um, about these things we call natural communities, <coughs> which are groupings of um, vegetation and uh, rocks, soils. Um, and then I'm also planning on working on a few different things throughout my year of service. Great. Excellent. Okay. You're from West Bridgewater. Yep. So welcome to Plymouth. Yeah. Charles, good to see you again. So for the folks that don't know who you are, who is, who is Charles Heller? Well, can I just say a few words of thanks to you? Yeah, sure. I really appreciate how you supported our efforts to see a discovery center for the Miles Standard State Forest. You put us in touch with um, uh, the commissioner, Leo Roy, for that. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, also, you've helped us with our program, Explore Natural Plymouth, and have even helped us get state funding for that project, big help. But what I really appreciate most is the way you retweet our <laughs> Twitters. <laughs> yeah. When that first happened, I, I thought, wow, somebody's really paying attention sure, absolutely. and supporting yeah. us. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's some great stuff that you're doing there. So tell, tell the people, well, tell the people you. What, you know, what, it, you know, what is it you do and what is the Southeast Mass Pine Barrens Alliance? Well, it's a group that came out of the Friends of Miles Standish State Forest that um, I started in 2007 only because I got lost in the Miles Standish. And, Literally um, got lost? I got lost yeah. in the Miles wow. Standish State wow. Forest. I found my way back to the forest Dave, headquarters. Dave, this may need, need to be an hour show now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about this. Everybody gets lost in the Miles <laughs> Anyway, I, I stopped in at the time I had just moved to Plymouth. Hmm. and. Uh, looking for something to do, having a new resident here, how could I get involved? Anyway, I got lost in the forest. I ended up at the supervisor's office and I said, is there a, a volunteer group, something I could join to, to help improve the trails, maybe add some signs so people like me don't get lost? Mm -hmm. And he immediately said, I've been wanting to start a friends group for 17 years. So I said, well, should I start one? It's and that, um, that was back in 2007, uh -huh. and it's been, uh, you know, I've been lost ever since. <laughs> what, a, what a great story. Now, what's your background? I'm a native Californian. Yeah. I love the Southwest yeah. landscape. Mm -hmm. And so moving to Plymouth um, kind of reminds me of some of the pinion forests of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, I ended up uh, moving to Plymouth after our children left home. Yeah. I just love this community. I love living by the water. 
I love how much uh, forested land. It's a great there community. Is. You may want to think of moving here, Jack. It's a very <laughs> friendly community. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And uh, it's a it's a real pleasure to live here. So tell us the Southeast Mass Pine Barren Alliance, what it is, and the mission, and how is it going. I understand you got some slides for us too. Well. Um, I really have everything to, um, I owe to the Nature Conservancy about how I feel about our environment. When we started the Friends of Miles Standish, um, like I said, we, we knew we were going to be volunteering to, to work on trails, but the Nature Conservancy had their office here in Plymouth, and they were doing a wonderful job talking to the state agencies and DCR Forestry and um, uh, about the need to revitalize and restore this habitat through the use of fire and other mechanical means. They were here because they realized that this was a globally rare habitat. Well, nobody knew it. I mean, I, residents didn't know it. Uh, people that were managing the forest didn't know until the Nature Conservancy, um, you know, brought it to our attention. And then it, here we are, you know, we're the Friends of Miles Standish State Forest and discovered that this isn't just any old forest. This is a unique, highly valuable forest. And we kind of made it our mission then to um, be partners with the state and with the Nature Conservancy to bring that to the attention of the public. Well, once we discovered um, that and started holding public meetings, <clears throat> we thought the best thing that could happen is that there should be a discovery center a regional discovery center in the Miles Standish State Forest. So a number of us began to work on that project. And then we realized that this was way outside of the scope of the Friends Group, which is a wonderful group. By the way, that slide you just showed, mm -hmm. I wanted to show that because that's the power of volunteerism and of partnering with the state. Mm -hmm. One of our projects as a Friends Group was to work with DCR to create an amphitheater in the forest. and that project um, was a great collaboration and the entire amphitheater only cost about $367 in materials wow, that's and it's terrific. still a wonderful asset. And, and most of those folks from Plymouth too? That helped yes, out? they're yes, from yeah. Plymouth and Carver yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course that was... That's right, uh, the forest goes through Carver as well. That's yes, right. yeah, that's yes. Right. it's yeah. a wonderful yeah. resource. Yeah. We're yeah. so fortunate to have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, um, so this, yeah. we got decided to take a regional view for protecting the um, uh, eco region. Mm -hmm. This is our community um, conservation center. Mm -hmm. This is the former home of the Nature Conservancy. They have since moved their program mm -hmm. away, and we've tried to pick up some of the. And did the, you buy it from them? No, this is a town-owned building. That's right. Oh, that's right. I remember the select board when that happened. Us. That's right. Yes. Very generous lease. Yeah, yeah. We have to pay for the. Um, upkeep and mm -hmm. so on, yeah. but we've decided to make it open for not just our group, but we, we um, offer the space to small groups that need a meeting place. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting to be there because um, it's on the Eel River, mm -hmm. which as you know is a nationally renowned restoration project, mm -hmm. and this young lady um, was one of our interns last year, and she is looking at herring that haven't run up into this area for 200 years. That was exciting. You know, you, you just yeah. gotta love Plymouth when yeah. you... Um, yeah. And we call it the Hathaway Conservation Center in... I didn't know that. ...honor of mm. the woman, Floyd Hathaway, whose home this used to be and oh. who's famous in the neighborhood for teaching the neighborhood mm -hmm. children about nature. Mm -hmm. So and it's set way back. I've been there oh, several it's times. Wonderful. So it's a beautiful and it's a setting. Beautiful hike yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, I encourage people to come by our little conservation yeah. center and take that walk along okay. the Eel River to so that So you established bridge. in 2013. Okay. Yes. So really. Want to go to the think, next one, Dave? Well, this is this is um, our mission. Um, the area you see in green is a federally designated eco region called the Atlantic Coastal Pine Barrens Ecoregion. It encompasses 523,000 acres, and about 162,000 of those acres are permanently protected. That's in open space, so that's not necessarily in natural communities, as Jack was talking about. But within that area alone are 182 state-listed rare and endangered plants and animals. 
those are only the ones we know about. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of, uh, of insects and I was going to say, there's a lot of yeah. insects. I mean, I learned from your tweets about all these insects <laughs> and all. Yeah, yeah. I've been tweeting about yeah. insects. Yeah. And um, 74 of those um, rare plants and animals are found in the town of Plymouth. So Plymouth has a... Is that, a that seems to be a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. We are an incredibly high value um, mm. for biodiversity, not just locally, but in the world. Mm. So that's what drives us. All of us are volunteers, I didn't, except for Jack. And we owe Jack to a, a very generous um, donor in Plymouth who um, gave us the money to be able to afford an AmeriCorps that's person. Yeah, very grateful terrific. for yeah, that. That's great. Jack works full time, and we'll have mm -hmm. him for a year. Excellent. And he's, He's doing a lot of great work. We'll get him to move to Plymouth by then. Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. Jack's <laughs> happy here too. Uh, if you could throw a little money by the way to move down here, that'd be nice. <laughs> so this is from the um, mm -hmm. reforced, um, Forest Resource Strategies mm -hmm. of Massachusetts. Again, it just it shows that the state recognizes the extreme and the very high value. Um, these are priority landscapes at risk. And why are we at risk? mainly due to um, development and mm. the lack of, um, and the suppression of fire. Um, our, the habitats that make up that ecoregion depend on disturbance. And uh, since Smokey the Bear, we've been incredibly good at putting out fires, but um, what we need here is, is early successional habitat, it's called, and um, those fresh young forests that are disturbed by either fire or hurricane or... Now that's Martha Vineyard down there, so they're in an extreme situation too, right? Eh? Yes, and if you notice Nantucket, I was wondering yeah. about this, yeah. Nantucket's in blue, but you know why? Because they've got uh, foundation down there that's preserved about half of it in uh, oh, okay. protected oh, okay. open space. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's maybe why they're... Okay. I'm not sure with that, but I, I know that's the case. Yeah. Um, anyway, you see that that red area completely covers Plymouth. Mm. So that's a... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's completely covered, yeah. you're right. We have to do everything we can as mm -hmm. a community to save as much of this yeah. um, natural communities as we can. I, I should mention that there are 48 natural communities. Um, those are all within the overarching um, title of Pine Barrens, but Pitch Pine Scrub Oak Forest is the, the dominant community. Um, used to extend all the way from uh, Maine all the way down to uh, New Jersey, yeah. but there's only three areas now that are left on the planet that are Atlantic Coastal Pine Barrens, New Jersey, Long Island, and this bit of, little bit of southeastern mm. Massachusetts. Which is hence where the name comes from? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. Great. Next slide, Dave. So here's just a real quick uh, view, just so you can get a, a visual of, of these species in Plymouth. A lot of them are butterflies and moths. A lot of butterflies, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But also and some, plants, too. Yeah. But also some uh, um, endangered mammals, like the northern long-eared bat. And this is just a quick overview. Jack is going to tell you about some of the other endangered plants that he's an animal that he's been working clover. on. There's a piping clover. Yeah. Y'all yeah. know so, about that. Um, and you're going to mention them by name. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the first one that I wanted to highlight was the um, northern red-bellied cooter, um, which is uh, it's a type of turtle um, that lives in Plymouth. Um, it uh, is federally threatened, but um, for the state of Massachusetts, it's endangered. So. Um, the, you've probably heard of um, the Endangered Species Act, which mm -hmm. was uh, put in place by the Nixon administration, I believe. That long ago, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, so uh, there's the Federal Endangered Species Act, but we also have uh, one for Massachusetts. I believe every state has an Endangered Species Act. Okay. Yep. Um, so they have a different listing um, for every one of them. Some of these are not federally listed, but they're listed in Massachusetts. Got you on. can tell Jack's been working on the details, but we're going to have to go through these really fast. Yeah. 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 I just want so. to mention that we raise, um, <coughs> we've been allowed by Mass Fish and Wildlife to raise Head Start red belly cooters. Yeah, so um, that was... So here's the whippoorwill. Yeah, this is the eastern <laughs> whippoorwill. But it's again, just notice the map. 
because you know Plymouth is very important for all of these species. Yep. Um, so the eastern whippoorwill, it's uh, not found in a whole lot of Massachusetts. You usually find it in open areas, mm. and because we uh, don't, like Charles was saying, we don't have a whole lot of those left because of fire suppression. They're usually found in uh, places like airports or mm. cultural grasslands, which is what we call like <coughs> hay fields or. Jack, we have 26 of these uh, to go through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next we have the rosate term. And 15 is, minutes, Jack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just need to pop yeah. right through these. Yeah. So just wanted this to is show. Rose rosate term yeah. um, yeah. in nests in Plymouth. It's beautiful, in, though. Yeah, I mean, they're it's, beautiful. It's a very nice looking region. bird. Next one is? Uh, uh, <laughs> next we have the Buckholds gray, which is um, a type of moth you'll find it only in Plymouth as you can see yeah uh -huh. only here so next is it because the forest is why you find because yes. the state forest yeah. why you find a lot of yeah. okay pitch pine scrub oak <coughs> most of these are associated yeah. so next we have the um, precious underwing which um, they Beautiful. didn't break it down by town but you can see in Plymouth County mm -hmm. there's uh, it's there and in um, Dukes County on the vineyard mm -hmm. um, next we have the uh, this is actually a plant it's the Walter sedge it's the type of grass um, that you find in water. It's only found in Plymouth Carver, and I believe that's, um, is that Wellfleet? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like that, yeah. 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 Next we have the Eastern Spadefoot Toad. Oh no, we have the New England Bone Set, which is another type of plant. Um, it's endangered in the state. Again, only really found in the Pine Barrens ecoregion. We have some of it over towards the west. Um, it's important to point out that it's a coastal plain pond, sure species and uh, Plymouth and uh, Plymouth County and Barnstable County are really the only areas with these coastal plain ponds incredibly important for our aquifer and, mm. and for all these a number of these rare species. Mm. So this is the eastern spadefoot toad. Um, this is a species that um, is threatened in Massachusetts. Um, for some reason the the federal government has records of it in Plymouth but the state government uh, does not. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you find it in the Pine Barrens. You also find it in um, the Connecticut River Valley. Mm -hmm. um, next, we have the Northern Long-Eared Bat, which is again li listed um, both federally and statewide. Uh, for some reason, the federal government has it in Plymouth and uh, different parts of the Pine Barrens. I no. just want to mention here that uh, AD Makepeace gave us um, a neighborhood grant mm -hmm. for. Um, a program we call Semp Bat. It's a, we were able to buy bat monitoring equipment, which we hope to lend out to landowners and property managers to monitor bats on their own property. So anyway. we're developing a number of tools to provide for um, ecological research. I didn't realize there were so many different types of bats. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yes. next is the upland sandpiper. Mm -hmm. It's a type of um, we call them shorebirds. I believe this is um, again only really found on the coast, and then in the Connecticut River Valley, uh, where they're um, you'll find their habitat. Um, next, we have the northern right whale, which you can see is um, endangered federally and statewide. Um, we don't have a map of the towns it's found in because it's it's an aquatic mammal, mm -hmm. so you, you're going to find that in the ocean mainly. <laughs> yeah. um, I figured that one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what gave it away? <laughs> um, yeah, that's endangered because of whaling. Um, next, we have the bald eagle, oh, which wow. um, a lot of people don't know, but it's not federally listed anymore. But it is in Massachusetts threatened. Um, not a lot, a lot of people know that you can find it in Eastern Mass. Um, I've seen it out west, but I haven't seen it around here. But that was kind of I think cool. people have seen them yeah. around here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, as yeah. you can see, it's listed. Yeah. You have it yeah. on the towns, but um, I haven't seen it mm. out here. Mm. Um, next, we have the Plymouth gentian, which is a type of plant. Um, it's mainly found in the Pine Barrens ecoregion. Um, I included it because it has yeah, Plymouth in the name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, we have the eastern box turtle, um, which is, uh, uh, again, a species of special concern. I want to include this because you can see it's found in a lot yeah. of different towns in the state, but just because you can find it in a lot of places doesn't mean that it might be doing the best. Yeah. It, it has obvious problems with um, development that could uh, cause it to go extinct or become endangered. Um, so. Next we have red root, um, which is another species of plant, uh, again, found in the Pine Barrens ecoregion. Um, 
I thought it was a cool looking plant. Yeah. So I thought I would include it. Um, Majority of people wouldn't know this stuff. You know, if they're walking through, yeah. they're not going to know this. Yeah. Well, that's it's fascinating. Part of our job is to, to let them know. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and so our last one that I included was the Vesper Sparrow, uh, which is a threatened species. Again, it's sort of like the Eastern Whippoorwill, where it, it relies on grasslands a lot. And because we don't really burn anything or do any natural disturbances yeah. anymore, um, their habitat is unfortunately going away. Um, so that's all the, the species that I have listed that I included. Um, on the next slide, I believe we have some uh, causes of risk um, in some of the uh, more characteristic plant species that um, you'll find around here. And w a couple of them which are very um, prevalent are pitch pine and white pine, um, which a lot of people think are pretty hardy and can do pretty well for themselves. But if you look um, at their ranking, you'll notice that they're, they're actually they're pretty highly uh, ranked for risk rank. Why is that? Um, it has to do with yeah. the change of climate. Ah, uh, okay, that would make sense. Invasive species moving yeah, in. That would make As sense. As you know, the pitch pine has been attacked recently. People are watching out for the the um, pine beetle that's moved in mm. from New Jersey. Um, so we we think of these as maybe weed trees because they pop up everywhere, but. Mm -hmm. They're highly, um, they're in the, the top rank for endangered, in, mm, because of climate change. You're right, I look down the ponds there and you see yeah. a lot of them in over by all the ponds and you see a lot of those popping up. Oh yeah, they're, yeah. you know, this is what they love. It, you know, fortunately, they do love disturbance. They'll come mm -hmm. right back after disturbance and they can grow in pure sand. Mm -hmm. I've That's taken pitch pines saying, out right. of, you know, this is what we have here and mm -hmm. they're well adapted to that. Mm -hmm. But, um, Things are changing, so mm. you know there's going to be a wonderful study. Um, we, we actually drafted an LSR grant. It's called a what's it's LSR? Th it's through the um, U.S. Forestry okay. Department's uh, landscape scale restoration grant, and we partnered in this grant application with the town of Plymouth, Mass Audubon, Tidmarsh Farms, um, the Mass Fish and Wildlife is part of this, and you know, the Department of Forestry really helped us put the grant together. But um, part of that is, um, involves Manomet too. I'm very excited about that. Mm. And uh, NOAA is uh, conducting a study that will help inform our portion of the grant restoration. Um, I'm not putting that very well. But um, NOAA is funding DCR, the Department of Conservation mm -hmm. and Recreation, to do a climate study and they are um, choosing the pitch pine scrub oak habitat yeah. for that study so we can know more about how changing climate will affect our forests here. So it's pretty exciting and yeah, that is. exciting yeah. to be a part of that yeah. grant. David Gould was hugely helpful in pulling together a project yeah, director for us. Environmental Plymouth. Services, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I know we only got a few couple of minutes left here, yeah. but um, you know, I guess this makes a lot more sense why you know, people talk about, well, we've got so much open space here, we need to develop more land for, you know, to help the economy. Yeah. But there's a fine balance there, and this is, and you brought a lot of reasons why. Talk well, about that a little actually, bit. Well, actually, um, studies show that for every dollar that you invest in open space, you're going to return four dollars on the investment. I just wanted to point this out really quick, yeah. because mass extinction is, um, something scientists have been talking about. And I happened to be at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History and came upon this big poster. It's huge. It filled up a, a whole wall in there, in their space, about human activity causing extinction. And it's um, estimated that by the year 2100, human activities such as land clearing and overfishing will have driven more than half the world's species into extinction. We're responsible for that right now. Mm -hmm. And as citizens <coughs> who live in a high value, highly biodiverse and at risk um, eco region, this ecosystem depends on us. What we do now in the next five years, 
10 years, 20 years, will determine whether or not those animals that we cohabitate with in this environment will survive. So land use, um, land development planning, it's all incredibly important for Plymouth. So I just really wanted to drive that point home, mm. that this we're talking about global mass extinction that's human-induced, but people like us working locally can have a huge influence on what happens by the year 2100. I think it's very daunting responsibility and sure. one I wake up with every morning. Yeah. So. Well, you know, if, if you were to have, if you, if you would have one species that you'd like to save, if you only had one to do, yeah. what would it be? Well, probably the human race. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that. <laughs> Other than that, what, what's happening right now is um, mass fish and wildlife will determine um, a signature species. And so right now, one of the focus signature species is the New England cottontail. But the reason they chose that species is because if that animal can survive, that means a whole range of other plants and animals need to survive too. So assuring you have the right amount of habitat for that species will protect a lot of, of the species associated mm. with it. So mm. I just want to point out um, yeah, please. one of the things that uh, we did when we started the Pine Barrens Alliance was to think about how to build partnerships because it's gonna take everyone to save this ecosystem. No group can do it, the state can't yep. do it, the federal government can't do it. It's going to take all of those entities working together. And we have, in this area, we've already identified over 200 um, federal, state, local, um, municipal agencies, uh, nonprofit groups, land trusts, all working to um, conserve this area. And we just need to pull together. Yeah, so yeah. we started this, um, we call okay. it the Massachusetts Coastal Pine Barrens Partnership. Okay. We are the new kids on the block. We are um, uh, the new uh, area 41. We just came back from a, a regional conference mm -hmm. last week. We were two days there, four of us attended. That's and great. we were highlighted as the um, uh, special, uh, successful partnership, and we're only two years old, so we're Congra really excited about that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you. Um, you know, you guys are doing some great work. I do these shows because I want to learn more about what folks like you are doing. I learned a lot more today than I have before, so continue the good work. Well, I'd like to invite you to our forum. We're having our third annual regional conservation forum on January 20th. Great. It's in conjunction with the New England um, uh, fire Science Exchange. There's going to be a field trip at Camp Edwards Excellent. on January 19th. You're going to get that out form. to people too, right? So people yes. know about it. That's great. That's thank great. Thank you. Well, thank you both again for, for joining me today. I hope you all at home enjoyed the show today and was able to learn more about uh, what these folks do. And I want to thank the folks here from PAC TV for a uh, great show again today. And uh, until next time, we'll see, we'll see you uh, on uh, State Matters.